something doesn't matter whatever you want Haribo! hey everybody so happy that you're here we love you all Haribo Rasanath to see we have devotees and friends from all over the world Nanda Gopi Mata Rasa Pradapu Ramit Shadi Hey Murli Gopal Prabhu So many beautiful friends. Let's see here. Um, turn this down so that you guys can can you guys all still hear me nicely? Yeah. Okay. Wonderful. Let's see, uh, Kairava, you sing something. We have a little uh, more time until the, the official uh, evening starts at 7 p.m. Uh, with the study of Kalyana Kalpa Turu. Did everyone get a copy of that? Uh, uh, the link to that I sent out to many of you. If, if someone could post that in the chat to everyone, that would be great. The link to, hey, it's Hari Raval, Hari Bol. We're sending all our love to your, your family during this time. Please ask all the devotees to please pray for and bless and take the blessings of Hari Revel's grandfather who, who passed away just uh, on Hanuman Jayanti. So we honor him and we respect him and we're asking to please um, everyone prayers for him. All right. Jai Bhaktivinoda Thakur.
to uh, spotlight that video there. All right there, Merle Gopal. All right, let's see here. That was some great dancing. No. Nah. All right. Can you guys hear me? Everything good? I am going to mm -hmm. switch now as we move into this next session, the budget and study. Let me give a basic introduction. I'll come over there. Thank you so much. Please, everyone, thank my kids for all their a uh, beautiful chanting. Haribo. Haribo. <laughs> They're all clapping. Good job, guys. Good job. We're going to feed you tonight. So welcome to all of you. Let's see how many folks we have on right now. We have 60. Last time we um, maxed out at 100. And uh, this time we got some support and we were able to, Krishna willing, uh, have space for 300. So um, as we just get set up here. <clears throat> Give me a second here. Uh, we're going to be welcoming Hello. on his grace, Shastavar Hello, Prabhu. Prabhu. I'm, I'm um, here. Can you hear me? I don't think he's on yet, but let me check. Maybe he is. I'm here. Yes, he is. Can you hear okay. me? And uh, just turn up. So now they Shastavar Prabhu, are you there? I'm here. Can you hear me? Oh, yes, I can. Okay. Adi Bol. Adi Bol. Let me find you. Hi, howdy, bull, everybody. So uh, I was recommended to uh, to uh, say a, a few words, some practical stuff here. Um, gosh, I'm so happy to see all you guys. I really can't tell you. We have our other co-hosts. We have Srivani and we have Vishnu Priya on the call. They're also hosting this with Shasti Prabhu. We have so many devotees, Hari Priya, Dharma Shakti, Titi Layo, Induleka, Tom, Connolly, Radha Madhava, Shrikala, and Jesse. So many wonderful friends. Thank you so much. Um, so, um, Shastivar Prabhu, will you pull your screen? Can you pull your screen down a little bit just so we can see more of you? Can you just bring it down just a touch? Is that good? Uh, yeah, that's perfect. Okay. Jai. So just as a brief introduction, we are 
um, here, not just to skim the surface, but to drink deeply, to dive deeply into this incredible work, masterwork by the great Bhakti saint and poet, uh, Bhaktivinoda Thakur. And um, this was going to be a festival that happened in one day, but by Krishna's infinite plan, we now are going uh, each week, verse by verse, deeper and deeper and deeper into this work that I promise you, if we listen carefully and if we uh, sing with our hearts, we will feel a dramatic change from where we started this book to where we end this book. So let me hand it now over to our um, host, Shastivar Prabhu. Jai Haribo, do we have the slides ready? I'm gonna yes, just. Prabhu, we have the slides ready. All right, I'm just gonna chant just a few moments. Pranam to our spiritual master, and then we'll get going. Can everyone see the screen? Srimate Bhakti Vetanta Swamini Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvashesha Sunyavati Vastya Chakesha Tadene Namo Bhakti Vinodaya Sachidananda Namine Gora Shakti Sarupaya Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Pachita Bhavan Jaya Nityananda Prabhu Anakta Sardam Jaya Jaya Dvaita Chandra Kripa Saga Jai Rupa Sanatana Jai Kadatara Jai Shri Krishna Chaitana Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadha Sri Vasari Gaurata Vinda Bolo Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Rama Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Rama Krishna, 
हरे राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे बोल हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 श्री गंगे देवी चुमने देवी भक्ति देवी तोसी महारानी की जाए सामे वेर भक्त बिन्ने की जाए ओ ग्लोरीज दे समुदी बोतीज ओ ग्लोरीज दे समुदी बोतीज ओ ग्लोरीज श्री श्री गुरु एंड गोदांगा सो वेलकम डियर डिवोटीज एंड थैंक यू वेरी मच ऑन दिस ईस्टर संडे फॉर जॉइनिंग अस फॉर दिस मोस्ट ऑस्पिशियस reading of uh Shri Shri Kalyana Kopataru. I really appreciate you spending your time with us. As Gorvani Prabhu said, if you stick with us and you go through this transcendent to songbook, you will be greatly, greatly enlivened and benefited immensely. So let's go to uh, the slides. Can we look at the agenda? So we have a very just gotta busy. say this is i'm sorry to interrupt but this is my kind of agenda you know what i'm talking about yeah so what we're going to do is we're going to kind of go over a quick review of uh uh what we went over some of the points we went over last week and then we're going to go into the vedic tree and we're going to kind of meditate on why shula bhakti vinod thakur named this this book kalyana kopataru and then my wonderful god brother Nutama Prabhu is going to take us on an excursion and talk a little bit about the forest of material enjoyment and then after that uh, my god sister Rukmini Mataji and Gorani Prabhu are going to talk about the forest of Vrindavan and give us a contrast there and then uh we're going to sing this Siksha and Diksha song which is the last song during the introduction of Kalyana Kopataru. And these are very nice. This picture here is a picture I was going to, I told Mataji I was going to show this. This picture is right side, outside of my house. It's a really beautiful tree that blossoms this time of the year. And the tree on the bottom is, is, is Vrindavan. Let's go to the next slide. So this, this is a review of last week. Last week I spoke to this slide but it might have been a little difficult to visualize it. If we look at that circle there and without the line in the middle, that represents the spiritual world where Lord Krishna is there as the supreme absolute truth, right? As Sri Yashupanishad says, Om Purnam Adaha Purnam Idam, Purnam Purnam Udachite. So the Supreme Lord is completely whole and perfect and in the spiritual world's complete harmony there, and there's no um, dissatisfaction or 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 uh, disruption there. Everything is in complete harmony, and everyone's engaged in pure devotion service. But that line across the middle is the line of the living entity's ego. When our ego begins to think that, oh wow, maybe I can also enjoy like Lord Krishna then that ego 
brings about material consciousness. And as is said in the Bhagavad Gita, that the material world is consisting of, and I read that from Bhagavad Gita, Oskana Bharato conquer of the foe. All living entities are born into delusion, overcome by the dualities of desire and hate. So those dualities of desire and hate manifest in the material world when we bring in the ahankara, the ego that we want to try to enjoy like Sri Krishna. So then we enter into the material world and this duality comes. So if what I was explaining last week that is interesting that Bhakti Vinod chose to use the Upadesh, Upalabdi, and Ushwaj, which all begin with the U. If you look at the bottom of that, that circle when it's split, the bottom part, Uch is the U, is on the bottom part, and the N, which is Nietzsche, which means to go down, is on the top part. So it's interesting to note that if you turn a cup upside down, you will never be able to pour anything in it. Everything, nothing will be captured. And similarly, if you turn it up, then you'll be able to capture the water. And, and also, I show you that our Vaishnava symbol is also like that U as well in the middle. So the point here is that if we follow the instructions and we avoid two things, anathas and aparads, then we can fill up with devotional ecstasy and come to the point of uchwaj, which is overflowing. But if we do not avoid offenses and anathas, then it's like that, that bucket on the side where everything just flows out. So I just wanted to uh, review that. At the end of this class, we're gonna have time for questions if anyone has any comments on that. So let's go to the next slide. So, Mataji Srivani, can you read the, the sloka that I mentioned, starting with Sri Vaikuntha Dami? Yes, Prabhu. Everyone can, everyone can meditate on this slide while we're listening to the sloka. A lot here. Sri Vaikuntha Dhame Ache Nishreo Ban Tahe Shobhapai Kalpo Toru Agonan. Taha Majhe E Kollan Kalpo Toru Raj Nitto Kala Nitto Dhame Koreno Diraj. Skondha Troy Achetar Opurbo Darshan. Upodesh, Upolobti, Uchaj Ganon. Shubhokti, Proshunotahe, Oti Shobhapai. Kollan Namok Fall, Agonanotai. J. Shujano, E Bitopi Koreno Astroy. Krishna Sheba, Shukolano, Paul Tarhoi. So we read this last week, but I'm going to read this sloka again because it kind of describes this transcendental parts. So in this transcendental realm of Sri Vindavan, Sri Vaikuntadam, there is a forest of the supreme perfection of life. Existing beautifully within that transcendental forest are innumerable wish-fulfilling desire trees. Amongst all the desire trees within this transcendental forest, there stands out one special tree, which is actually the king of them all. This one is named the desire tree of auspiciousness, and it conspicuously exists here within the eternal abode for all time. What a wonderful sight is this special desire tree as it stands with its threefold trunks. These three divisions branch out as Upadesha, Upalati, and Uchwasha, overflowing spiritual emotions. This tree is very beautifully decorated with flower blossoms of especially sweet devotional service. Plus there are innumerable fruits which are named Kalyana, auspiciousness. Any honest and noble person who sincerely takes shelter of this transcendental tree gets to taste these fruits of special supreme auspiciousness, which is devotional service to the Supreme Lord Sri Krishna. So, this is very, very, very wonderful. I mean, it describes 
this transcendental tree. And I was meditating on why Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur decided to use the, the Kopaviksha tree for this songbook. And if you look at the top, we can see that Lord Brahma and his transcendental realization, he also uh, visualized this Kopa Taru, right? And you see Chintamani Prakara Sadmashu, Kopa Viksha, Lakshavi Teshu, Sudabira Vipale Antam. So it's said in, a, in, a, in the Brahma Samhita, I worship Govinda, the primal Lord, the first progenitor, who is tending the cows, yielding all desire in a bowl filled with spiritual gems, surrounded by millions of purpose trees, right? So this purpose tree, this spiritual transcendental desire tree is very, very special in the spiritual world, right? You can go up to these trees and you can get anything that your heart desires from these trees. Uh, they will give you whatever you want. But we have to be very careful because if we desire to compete with Krishna, then we will no longer be in a spiritual world. So we have to be very careful about what we desire. But these, these desire trees can give us whatever we desire. Whereas in a material world, you have to go to a particular tree to get a particular fruit. But still, we can meditate on the wonderful qualities of trees, even within the material world. And on the bottom of the page, you see the Trinata piece of Nichena, Torora piece of Hishnuna. So it's very interesting that Lord Chaitanya chose the trees to give us instruction on how we can be tolerant in devotional service, right? Think about it. Why didn't he use Brahmins as the example of tolerance? Why did, why did he use trees as the example of tolerance? So we should understand that trees are actually very, 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 very special. They have such great tolerance. And I've listed how in the Vedas, in so many different ways, we use the trees as examples. The Vedic tree is consisting of the Rig Veda, Sama Veda, Yajur Veda, Dharva Veda, etc., along with the Upanishads, the Puranas, the Itihasya, the Tantras, the the Pancharatana, they're all part of the Vedic tree. And the Bhagavad Gita, Ramayana, Mahabharata, they're all part of that tree as well as far as, as, as well as the Sadhashanas, the various philosophies, they're all part of that Vedic tree of transcendental knowledge. And then, in, if, if you look at trees, it's, it's amazing that the trees, they, they provide so much to the human society. They provide fresh air, they, they provide fruits, flowers, they, they give us shade. Um, the books that we are reading from uh, come from the papers that the trees provide. So the trees are so, so wonderful. They are, they are, they are, they are such a, a, a wonderful, wonderful support to human society. So previously, before the modern society came about, the Vedic civilization was very much centered on trees, right? If you look at the different ashrams, the brahmacharya ashrams, they lived in the, the house of the, the spiritual master, which was in the forest, right? So the brahmacharis lived in the forest, and then the, the vanaprasas retired to the forest, and the sannyasis, of course, spent a lot of their time in the forest. So out of the four ashrams, three of them highly depended on, on the forests and, and the trees. So if you look at all of our books, there are very, very vivid descriptions of these various trees. In Bhagavatam, they describe uh, in many different places all these wonderful trees, and I've kind of sprinkled them all over this page, like Parijata and Mango, one of my favorite. So there's so many trees that are there that are giving us so much benefit. And then our Supreme Lord, our most dear Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he was born underneath a what? A neem tree, isn't it? So he was known as Nimai Pandit. And then on the other side, we see Lord Buddha, Lord Buddha, Buddha he attained his, his, his enlightenment under an Ashok tree as well. And then in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, all of the various devotees of Lord Chaitanya, they were all 
outlined in the, in the Chaitanya Charantaritam as branches of the Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's tree of devotional service. So in this way, it's, it's so wonderful for us to meditate on how these trees are so tolerant and they provide us so much. And Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur is having us to meditate on these trees to try to understand exactly how we can develop some of those qualities of, of, of uh, mercifulness and patience that these trees have. So can I mention a little something, a little something, uh, just a little piece of nectar that I, that I found, Prabhu? Go ahead, Prabhu. That the spiritual form of the guru of uh, Lord Chaitanya's guru, Madhavendra Puri, the guru of Ishwara Puri, who was the guru of Sri Chaitanya himself, his spiritual form is a Kalpa Riksha tree. Wow, beautiful, mm. wonderful, wonderful. So these, yeah, so these trees are not ordinary. And, and I, I want to offer everyone on this Easter Sunday, if, if we can kind of take some time and meditate on how trees help us in so many different ways in our human society. And just everyone meditate on trees. When you see a tree, hug a tree. <laughs> well, someone just mentioned here that trees provide so many essential oils for people, the medicines that people use in their lives. It's unlimited, un, un, unlimited. I'm going to end this session with one, one last story. So one time, you know, some time ago, I lived in this particular house. And when I drove up to my house, it had this very, very beautiful weeping willow tree that kind of blossomed in the, in the, in the summertime. It I was love weeping willow trees. They're such beautiful. Nice. This weeping willow tree was just gorgeous. It was huge. Every time I drove up in my driveway, I would just, I would just look at it and smile. It was so beautiful. So unfortunately, it was right in the middle of my driveway and my neighbor's driveway, right? So my neighbor, he began to complain about this weeping willow tree and say, oh, who why did this get planted and it's, it's infringing on my property. And he used to complain and he complained about this beautiful tree. And I used to say, wow, how can he, how can he be so against such a beautiful creation of the Lord? So one day I came home and this rascal had cut the tree in half. Mm -hmm. He cut the side of the tree that was on his property. That is I, definitely a rascal move. That oh is my terrible. God. I was in tears when I saw that tree and the tree was crying. You could see the tree was in such pain, right? So anyhow, I, what to do? So I'm going to tell you what happened. So the next day, when I drove home from work, there was an ambulance at that next door's house, the neighbor's house. There was an ambulance there and he was being wheeled out by the paramedics. The guy had had a severe heart attack. So I never saw him again after that. So I, I'm just saying that, you know, these living entities are not ordinary. You know, we have many examples of living entities that somehow or another, they may have to take birth as trees, demigods even. We have the whole twin Arjun trees, isn't it? So, you know, we never know what, what Living entities are in these trees, but what we should do is appreciate these, these wonderful trees, you know, as much as possible and meditate. Why Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur is, has named this, this book, Kalyana Kopa Turu, right? So any questions we can ask a little later? I think it's a little late. We got to move on with the program. So everyone meditate on this, you know, and See if maybe in another time someone can bring some other stories of, about trees. It's such, it's such a huge topic. Just to go into this for a few minutes is not enough. We can spend months just meditating on the significance of trees in a Vedic culture. But I thought we'd just taste a little bit about it. Okay, so let's go to the next slide. So Srila... Bhakti Vinod Thakur is talking about this particular tree, but then he's also talking about the forest in which all of these trees are in. So 
I thought it would be nice for us to talk about how this, these forests of the material world comes about and how the material world is compared to a great forest of enjoyment in the Srimad Bhagavatam so that we can kind of get an idea like that circle that I showed you at first is the circle of samsara. So sometimes we're up and sometimes we're down and sometimes, you know, we get some good out of this material world and sometimes we suffer like hell, just like right now, you know, the whole world is, is plunged into this whole pandemic and it doesn't matter how much money you have or what position you're in, you know, you're forced to suffer as a result of, of this, this uh, severe the pandemic, pandemic that's going on. So we're always experiencing some type of misery in the material world one way or another. So my great God brother, Anuta Prabhu is gonna talk from Srimad Bhagavatam about the forest of mature enjoyment. He's my dear God brother, and he's one of the few persons that shared my experience in Krishna consciousness very strongly. Uh, it, Nutama Prabhu, you there? I'm here, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. That's so Anutta Babu, he, him and I, we, we started in Henry Street in Brooklyn in Krishna Consciousness under the Lotus Feet of Shishi Radha Govinda. And Anutta Babu, you went to, this, to school with your dhoti on, right? Yeah, my senior year, I moved, into, I moved into the temple at the end of 11th grade and stayed the summer. And my parents wanted me to finish my senior, finish high school. So I uh, relocated to the high school near the temple in Washington, D.C. And back in those days, there was no question of wearing pants and shirt. We always wore dhotis and shaved heads. So I went to my senior year uh, with my shaved head and dhoti every day. Prabhu, that's enough to go back to Godhead in itself. If, if anyone can, can understand. Go back to Godhead or get mugged. <laughs> what it meant to go to high to school a public school in those days in the 70s with a dhoti and a shaved head incredible so Anut Babu is very very special devotee we're really fortunate to have him here he also shared... happens to be the the father of my wife Brinda and the grandfather to my three kids oh Haribo 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 I'm <laughs> I'm waiting for Kirtan to go to school in his dhoti and shaved head. <laughs> <laughs> I have a feeling that's not going to happen in your lifetime there. <laughs> so Anutama Prabhu also, you know, he, he joined the Radha Dhamma Traveling Sangatam Party and we were on that together. And then he went to Bombay. We traveled all over India together, distributing books in Bombay. And then he went to Mauritius. I went to Mauritius. And guess what? My firstborn was born in Mauritius, and his firstborn was born also in Mauritius. How do you both? Rinda's, Rinda's a Mauritian, yep. <laughs> and, and then we both ended up here in a DC metro area. So without further ado, Anutam Babu, go ahead. All right, so I have, uh, what, 20 minutes, more or less? Yeah, yeah 20 minutes. OK. Namaya Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prastaya Bhutale Shumate Bhaktivedanta Swamani Tilamane. Namaste, Saraswati Devi, Gauravani Pacharane, Nevasheshya, Sanyavadi Pashtachadi, Shatarane. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. So, looking at this chapter in the Bhagavatam, the forest, material world as the great forest of enjoyment. And reading through the verses, I, I came to the realization that Sukadev Goswami was really laying out the sauce. And the uh, he was uh, not holding back. So before we get directly into that, and, I, and nor am I going to go too deeply into the details, I, wanted to, I found some other quotes from Prabhupada in his purports in various uh, Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, and some conversations, setting the stage for you know, why we're here in the world in the first place. And you were touching on that, Shastivar, a bit. So material world as the forest of enjoyment is kind of a, a misleading title because it's really the forest of suffering. But uh, they allure us in to read it, thinking there's some enjoyment here. But Sukadev Goswami really explains how we're not enjoying 
we're really suffering through every aspect of our life. But uh, like I said, I, I wanted to bring up a few points about how we got into this forest of enjoyment in the first place. So in the Bhagavad Gita, in uh, chapter three, text 36, um, Arjuna says to Krishna, he says, by what is one impelled to sinful acts, even unwillingly, as if engaged by force? And in, in the purport, Prabhupada explains that a living entity as part and parcel of the Supreme is originally spiritual, pure, and free from all material contamination. So we're, we're, not, we're not contaminated. We're all pure and spiritual originally. Therefore, by nature, he is not subject to the sins of the material world. But when he is in contact with material nature, he acts in many sinful ways without hesitation and sometimes even against his will. As such, Arjuna's question to Krishna is very important as to the perverted nature of the living entities. Although the living entities sometimes do not want to act in sin, he is still forced to act. Sinful actions are not, however, impelled by the super soul within, but are due to another cause, as the Lord explains in the next verse. So, Prabhupada says here that it's not God making us do sinful activities. It's a, it, there's a different reason what impels us to sinful activities. And the next verse, which is fairly famous, the Supreme Personality of God had said, it is lust only, O Arjuna, which is born of contact with the material modes of passion and later transformed into wrath, and which is the all devouring sinful enemy of the world. So that's the reason why we're in the material world, due to our desire to enjoy separately from Krishna, which is manifested in the form of lust to enjoy this world separately. So in the purport here, Prabhupada explains, when a living entity comes in contact with the material creation, his eternal love for Krishna is transformed into lust. So we all have eternal love for Krishna. It's, it, the Chaitanya Charitamrita describes that it is, it is within us already. It is just a question of reviving it. Our eternal love for Krishna is transformed into lust in association with the mode of passion. Or in other words, the sense of love of God become transforms into lust as milk in contact with sour tamarind is transformed into yogurt. So we are pure, we love Krishna, we're in the spiritual world, but somehow or other, we develop this desire to want to enjoy separate from Krishna. So Krishna, he doesn't uh, force us to stay there, he gives us the opportunity. And when we come to this world, we get covered with lust as, yog as milk becomes, uh, turns into yogurt, coming in contact with sour tamarind. And uh, continuing in this purport, Prabhupada says, the Supreme Personality of Godhead expanded himself into many for his ever increasing spiritual bliss. And the living entities are part and parcel of this spiritual bliss. So that answers the question of who are we? What are we? We're just expansions of God. We're expansions of Krishna. But we're minute, we're very small. We're like sparks from the fire. And why does God create us? Why are we created? To Krishna creates us so we can enjoy with him. That's the whole purpose of our being, to enjoy with Krishna in the spiritual world, in the real forest of enjoyment, which is Vrindavan, which will be the next section discussed. So he, Prabhupada continues, they also have partial independence. That's our problem. We're not little robots. Krishna is not keeping us there as, uh, as, as by force. We have some independence. We can love Krishna or we can stray away, just like our own children. They can love us or they can go off and do their own life, whatever they like. They can listen to us or not listen to us. You think they love you, and next thing you know, they put on a dhoti and shave their head and go to high school. Go to high school. And my parents were liberal but uh, i'm sure they were my mother kept saying to me uh I i'm just waiting for him to snap out of it 
<laughs> he was, but they were liberal enough not to not to just not to stop me, which was fortunate. They let me do uh, my thing, as we used to say in the seventies. <laughs> so by the misuse of their independence, misuse of their independence, and Prabhupada gives this example many many times of the son who leaves the father. Say the father is, you know, well off, established businessman, person. And the son leaves the father. He goes off on his own independently. He falls on hard times. Sometimes he, he forgets the father. He becomes homeless. He becomes destitute. But the father never forgets the son. And, and, and if the son does come back to the father, he's, the father is always willing to take him back. Always happy to see him again. Prabhupada gives that example many times. So that's how we are. We're, we're runaway children. We've all run away from Krishna. I want to enjoy. I want to be separate from you. I'm looking for my own enjoyment. You know, I want to try, I want to try things out. <laughs> and that's always our problem. We want to experiment with material enjoyment. So by this misuse of independence, when the service attitude, service, see we, in the spiritual world, we have a service attitude. And when we become devotees of Krishna, we have a service attitude. So the service attitude is transformed into the propensity for sense enjoyment. Instead of wanting to serve God, we just want to serve our senses. And this takes the shape in the form of, uh, uh, you know, intoxication, meat eating, uh, gambling, and illicit sex, basically the four sinful activities. And, uh, so he's, Prabhupada says here, they come under the sway of lust. This material creation is created by the Lord to give facility to the conditioned soul to fulfill these lustful propensities. And when he is completely baffled by prolonged lustful activities, the living entity begins to inquire about the real position. So here it, Prabhupada makes it very clear. Krishna gives it the opportunity, the material world. He said, you, know, you want to enjoy? I'm going to create this place. It's not as nice as my place, <laughs> but uh, it's where you can facilitate your independent activity and you can pretend you are Krishna, you can pretend you are God, and you can try to enjoy your senses as much as possible. And then Prabhupada says here, when we become completely baffled by prolonged lustful activities, the living entity begins to inquire about the real position. So that is the beginning of our in interest in Krishna consciousness. We meet so many people preaching Krishna consciousness around the world. Most people are not interested. They're not going to take it up. They're, they're, you know, they can't understand what you're talking about because they're not completely baffled yet. When we reach the platform when we're baffled, meaning we're fed up, we're dissatisfied, we're unhappy, we're miserable, we're suffering, and we realize it. Everyone's suffering, everyone's miserable, everyone's unhappy. They don't realize it, though. When you do realize it, then you begin to inquire as to what is God, and why am I here, and what is the purpose of life. But sometimes people, they say, how come you Hare Krishnas are such downers? Uh, I don't feel <laughs> unhappy. I'm, I'm perfectly happy. I've got COVID, and I'm at home with my family. I'm doing great. <laughs> well, we'll get to that point. That's another verse. In fact, that's the next verse I'm pulling up here. I have two verses from Gita. I have a little bit from Conversations, and I have the Bhagavatam, the, the forest to read from. And I got not a lot of time to do it. <laughs> so, so people like Gorbani says, people say, I'm happy. You know, I, you know, I don't need this Hare Krishna. I don't need religion. I'm, you know, I've got everything I need in life. So this next verse. Under chapter 13, Krishna says, Janma mrityu jara vyadi dukkha doshanu darshanam. And that means that birth, death, old age, and disease, one who sees this, he's intelligent. And in this, there's a whole, there's actually, in that verse, there's uh, verse 8 through 12, there's one, two, three, four verses, five verses. So he describes many things that an intelligent person sees. So an intelligent person sees birth, death, old age, and disease. And in the purport here, Prabhupada says that one should try to understand the distress of accepting birth, death, old age, and disease. 
First, one should try to understand the, these problems. There are descriptions in various Vedic literatures of birth. In the Bhagavatam, the world of the unborn, the child stay in the womb of the mother, its suffering, etc., cetera, are, are all graphically described. It should be thoroughly understood that birth is distressful because we forget how much distress we have suffered within the womb of the mother. We do not take any solution to the repetition of birth and death. We forget, you know, who, who can remember the suffering? But in the Bhagavatam, it talks about the living entity in the womb. And when he reaches about seven months, when his consciousness is developed, he realizes he's suffering and he prays to God, please, you know, just let me out of here and I'll, I'll be your devotee. <laughs> of course, when he comes out, he forgot that prayer and he goes about his life. So similarly, at the time of death, there are also kinds of suffering. And they are also mentioned in the authoritative scriptures. These should, not be, these should be discussed. Prophet says right here, we should talk about these things. I remember with my parents, even though there was a lot of distress in my family from birth, death, old age, and disease. My brother passed away when he was 14. Just he caught some hepatitis or something, some disease, and he died at 14. Big, you know big disturbance in the family. Then my sister got a brain tumor when she was 38. She's four, she was four years older than me. My brother was four years younger than me. And within a few, she had operation and this and that. And you know, within a few years though, she, she passed away. But my parents never wanted to talk about, you know, they, my, I would, I would, sometimes I'd try to bring it up because I was a devotee. I became a devotee very young. And they said, no, we don't want to talk about those things. We don't, we don't discuss these things. But Prabhupada says, here that these things should be discussed because these are real problems. And as far as disease and old age are concerned, everyone gets practical experience, Prabhupada says. So everyone knows we're getting old. Everyone knows, everyone knows we get diseased and you don't have to be old to get diseased. You can be diseased and be young. At any point in life, there's diseases. And right now the whole world is suffering from diseases and uh, distressed about it. So no one wants to be diseased, no one wants to become old, but there is no avoiding these. Unless we have a pessimistic view of this material life, considering the distress of birth, death, old age, and disease, there is no impetus for our making advancement in spiritual life. So Prabhupada lays it all out, that unless you have a pessimistic view about the material world, you're not going to take Krishna consciousness. Like Gauravani said, people say, I'm happy. I don't, you know, I'm enjoying my life. So until you come to the realization that there's diseases, everyone knows there's diseases, but until you know you suffer from diseases and you have problems yourself and that old age, eventually everyone comes. If you live long enough, you'll all get to old age. I remember Prabhupada telling us in his last months when he came to Vrindavan, and he was speaking, he gave an introductory talk when he arrived there. He said, don't think this won't happen to you. You know, just a practical comment he made amongst many comments. Don't think this won't happen to you. Old age will come if you live long enough. The only way you avoid old age is to die young. And that's not very desirable either. So unless you have a pessimistic viewpoint on the material life, you're not gonna be uh, you're not going to be no impetus for making advancement in spiritual life. That's what Prabhupada says. So that's why most people we meet are in the mood of enjoyment. We go to concerts. We go uh, on the street to meet people, to sell Prabhupada's books, to talk about Krishna. We go on Hari Nam. And everyone's in the mood of enjoyment. No one is, uh, you know, unless very, no, nobody's contemplating these problems. And the people that do contemplate them, they ultimately take to Krishna consciousness. So there's a few more things here, a few more Prabhupada says. So just trying to not interject much of my own thought, but just keep it with Prabhupada. This is a classic thing for my father-in-law. <laughs> anytime you catch him, anytime during the day, you, you say, hey, I, I called to talk to you about this thing. He's like, let me just tell you something that I was just reading that Prabhupada was saying. Here's what Prabhupada said. This is his favorite thing to do. Right. He loves quoting Guru Shiva. I don't want to invent anything then no one can cr criticize what I say. <laughs> I only read what Prabhupada said. So pro just a short little paragraph in the in a Bhagavatam ver purport I read this morning. He said, this illusory energy or the curtain of Maya 
has to be removed. And when it is done so, the living entity can see the Lord face to face. So once we get rid of illusion, once we get rid of Maya, we can see Krishna face to face. And all his miseries are at once removed. All the suffering. Not that Prabhupada said, it's not that you're not going to get disease, you're not going to get old age. This will happen to everyone. A devotee gets old age, a devotee gets diseases. But the miseries of identifying with this body and suffering as if it is ourself that is suffering, that is removed because we realize I'm not the body, that I'm the soul. My body will get old. My body will get diseases. My body will die. Everyone's will. There's no question of it. It's the way the world is made. So every one of us wants to remove the miseries of life. Very good statement there. But we do not know how to do it. The solution is given here, and it rests on us to assimilate it or not. Rests on you. Prabhupada said, it's your choice. You do what you want. Rests on you to assimilate it or not. I thought that was a pretty good statement I found the other day. So getting on to trees, there was a converse, in the conversation books in Melbourne in 1976. This is very short. A couple, couple of little things here. They're on a morning walk with Pushta Krishna Swami and Guru Kripa Swami and uh, other devotees. So they're talking about uh, karmis, vikarmis, akarmis, you know, basically sinful people and pious people. So Prabhupada says here, sinful activities, duskritina, vikarma. Vikarma means bad activities. Karma means just basic activities generally in the mode of the, uh, within the realm of the scriptures, and vikarma means against the scriptures. So, and duskritina means an unfortunate person. So people who are unfortunate and people who are sinful, therefore they will be punished in different forms of life. Therefore, we find so many species of life or forms of life. In fact, the Vedas inform us that there are 8,400,000 species of life throughout the universe, not just in this world. We're talking about insects, we're talking about fish, we're talking about plant life, we're talking about birds, we're talking about humans, we're talking about mammals, snakes, reptiles, there's a lot of species of life. So where did all these species come from? Why are there so many species in the world? Said here that we find so many species of life. He says, this is punishment. By Maya's curtain, they are thinking, we are happy. Just like Gauravani said, people say, we're happy, we're happy. So it's Maya's curtain that they're thinking that. Maya means illusion, of course. Maya means uh, identification of this world. So we are happy, just like this tree is a punishment. But it, and here we're talking about trees because we're in the tree conscious talking conversation. A tree is punishment, but it has no sense that this is punishment. You could come up to the tree and preach to the tree all day long. You're suffering. You should become a devotee of Krishna. You should chant Hare Krishna. The tree will not respond because his consciousness is very deeply covered. Only human being, you could talk to the dog. You could talk to your cat. You could talk to your plants in the house and get them, try to get them to become devotees. But they won't because their consciousness is covered. Of course, Prabhupada did say even a dog can chant. But... Uh, that's a special case. Generally speaking, we have, have no dogs living in the ashram. <laughs> they're not taking up, they're not becoming brahmacharis. Only the humans become devotees. So then Guru Kripa says, he thinks he's happy. The person thinks he's happy. And Prabhupada said, standing happily for 5,000 years, the tree. You know, there are trees in California, 5,000 years old. And then Guru Kripa says, drinking only water, the tree is only drinking water. And then Prabhupada says, if you are asked to stand here for five hours, you'll feel most uncomfortable. But they are standing for 5,000 years. No oh. uncomfortable. This is punishment. Punishment is there. But unaware. So everyone is like that. Everyone in the material world, they are being punished in different degrees, but unaware. That is Maya's grace. That although he is punished, he cannot understand. So that kind of answers the question why people say, I'm happy, <laughs> I'm not, I have no problems. 
That is Maya's grace, that although he is punished, he cannot understand. So interesting morning walk conversation. So that's all my, now we'll get to the, the Bhagavatam and this forest of so-called enjoyment in five minutes. And Gauravati asked me specifically <laughs> to tread lightly. And I actually, when he told me that, I hadn't read the section yet. And after I read the section, I said, oh my God, this is like. <laughs> Sukadev Goswami is like. Uh, it's, He's it giving was, the heavy sauce. It was like small Krishna on the Radha Damodar bus. You know? <laughs> That's <laughs> exactly what Shasti Prabhu said. That's so funny. You know, <laughs> it was, just, just briefly, just to, just to put context on this. You know, Shastivar Prabhu, when I mentioned this, is such a heavy section to read from in Bhagavatam. He said, you know, Bhaktivinoda Thakur is doing this for a reason. He's taking us on a journey. And for us to all be on the journey together, we have to first understand what's happening around us, where we're coming from before we can go forward. And that's why I wanted to read these introductory other uh, purports and conversations that Prabhupada sets the stage that we are all suffering in this world due to our independence and our, uh, our break away from the spiritual world and our desire to enjoy separately from Krishna. So we have to know, you know, set the stage of how we got here and what we're doing here. So the material world as a great forest of enjoyment in, uh, and there's an introductory to the chapter which, is, which I'm gonna read from most of it and not so much the individual verses, because then will take way too long. So here, Prabhupada sums it up in this introductory to the chapter. He says, when the pure soul wants to give up the Lord's service to enjoy the material world, Krishna certainly gives him a chance to enter the material world. So again, we read that same thing, that Krishna allows us to come to this world when we decide to enjoy separately. So as stated in the Prema Vivarta, Krishna Bahir Mukha Hana Boga Vanshakari. And Prabhupada quotes that a lot. I've heard it, I, I, I've heard it many, many times. He says, this is the reason the pure spirit soul falls down to the material world, due to his activities under the influence of the three modes of material nature. The living entity takes different positions in different species. So pretty much reiterating what Prabhupada was talking about, that we take, there's many species, there's trees, there's uh, animals, there's 8,400,000 species. So we, we're wandering in all of those, trying to enjoy. But it's only when we come to the human form that we can actually inquire as to why I'm suffering. So sometimes he's a demigod in the heavenly planets and sometimes a most insignificant creature in the lower planetary systems. In this regard, Naratam Das Thakur, he says, he has a song and he says, uh, I'll read the English, the living entity passes through various species. He is obliged to eat and enjoy abominable things. In this way, his whole life is spoiled. Without the protection of an all merciful Vaishnava, the conditioned soul cannot get out of the clutches of Maya. As stated in the Bhagavad Gita, Manat Stani Indriyani Prakriti Stani Karshati. The living entity begins material life with his mind and the five knowledge acquiring senses. And with these, he struggles for existence within the material world. These senses are compared to rogues and thieves within the forest. And they take away a man's knowledge and place him in a network of nations. One important point to mention here in this song by Naratan Das Thakur, he says that without the protection of an all merciful Vaishnava, the conditioned soul cannot get out of the clutches of Maya. So that's the secret of how to get out of Maya and that's the mercy of the devotees is that we want to spread Krishna consciousness to others. Prabhupada was talking once and he was talking about the, uh, the uh, let's remember the term, Bhajananandi and the Goshti Anandi. Bhajananandi is a person who likes to live in seclusion and practice his own spiritual practices by himself. 
And a ghosty Anandian wants, is one who wants to go out to give his spiritual realization to other people and enlighten people. And Prabhupada gave this example. He said, the person who wants to stick by himself in seclusion is like a person who's making sweets just to eat for himself. And a person who wants to give Krishna consciousness to other people is a person who wants to make sweets and give them out to everyone else. I thought that was uh, a great example. Okay. I heard Prabhupada give that. Hey, Puluji. So I think this is a kind of a good time for us to, to move on to the next section when you're talking about sweets. Actually, we kind of prepared this kind of like a sweet and sour subject. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Sweet and sour subject. I mean, it's it's nice because you know you have to enjoy the the the, the contrast between the sour, which is we have to know good. why we're suffering. Yeah, we have to we're... exactly. So you're saying uh, time is up? Is that what you're saying, Shasti Bar? Yeah, yeah. Right, so, right. Twenty minutes. Yeah, I, personally, I didn't think I'd fill twenty minutes, but you know how time flies. <laughs> time and absolutely. time wait for no man. So, absolutely. Hey, Prabhujis. Uh -huh. Yes, this is Rasa Prada. All my my oasis is in Dandavas to you guys. I have a question for Anuta Prabhu. Go ahead, Prabhu. Uh, yeah, just one thing, Rasa Prada Prabhu. We can, if Shastivar Prabhu thinks we can do the question, it's up to him. But we were going to save questions till the end of the session. But uh, since you're on, go ahead, please. Maybe I'll I love um, you. I love you too. <laughs> This is, this is the question real quick related to what you're talking about. Uh, we left the spiritual world. So how many of us are in this miserable world? Because if you start counting, you're going to lose counting. But if you start counting, how many millions and millions and millions of souls are trapped in different bodies? All right. And my question is, are we... Are we a recycle uh, souls, or there is millions and millions that leave the spiritual world to come here for for just enjoyment, or is so bad up there that everybody's coming down here? And excuse my ignorant question, please. Well, a quick, easy answer is first. First, it's described that in a relative term for our small brains to understand. The spiritual world represents three quarters of the total un of an unlimited creation. So three quarters and the material world consists of one quarter. So three quarters of the, of, of the souls are, in, are liberated with Krishna in the spiritual world or the Vaikuntha worlds, Vishnu, Krishna, uh, depending on their relation. And only one quarter is down here. Obviously there's people getting liberated regularly, going back to Godhead and there's people coming in it's, 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 it's never ending. So there's no, there's no number. It's an, un, it's a, we're dealing with unlimited. Krishna is unlimited, but they do give the example of three quarter and one quarter. So, okay, Prabhu. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Can we go to the next slide in the present? Thank you so much, Amuta Prabhu. That was wonderful. Okay. All right, let's all give an intimate everyone a big Hari Bo, a round of applause. Hari Bo. <laughs> so now we're going to get to the next part, which is once the living entity has realized there's no happiness in the, in the spiritual world, and he runs back to the lotus feet of the Lord, and enters the forest of Vrindavan. And I'm gonna turn it over to Gaurani Prabhu to kind of just describe the difference between what happens when a Lord has is surrounded by his loving devotees and the devotees are taking full shelter of, of, of the mercy in, in the forest of Vrindavan. Over to you, Prabhu. All right, well, is uh, my mom Rukmini there? Matt, are you here yet? Are you able to join today? Um, hoping that she can speak with me today. But I'll get started. Um, I've been uh, reading. Um, I've been reading Krishna book uh, recently, um, and I always like to plug 
there's a devotee friend of ours uh, named Tulsi Prabhu who uh, has created an app called My BVL, which allows audiobooks, listening to just Prabhupada's books from a free app on the app store. It's called My Bhaktivedanta Vedic Library. So please download it, check it out. It's free and uh, no one's making any money from it, but he's using his own money to support it. So I've been listening to recently Krishna book. It's such a lovely book to listen to Prabhupada's ecstasies about Krishna and Prabhupada's carefully gone through the Srimad Bhagavatam and collected uh, uh, all the things that Sukadeva Goswami spoke uh, to Maharaj Pariksit and everything Pariksit Maharaj spoke back to all about Krishna. Anything that was spoken about Krishna uh, in Bhagavatam is touched on in Krishna. So um, if my mom is there, you might have to unmute yourself. So uh, feel free. Vishnu, since you're a host, if you can search for her and try and chat with her or reach out to her in some way. Um, so um, my obeisances to my spiritual master, His Holiness Radhana Swami, and to all of you. Mom Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shamati Radhana Swami Niti Namini Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shamati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namini Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pacharni Nirvishesha Shanyavadi Pasjati Vishitani So here's a little section that I found which is quite sweet. A um, couple of sections here. Um, this is a section, there's a beautiful section, which is a little philosophical, so I'm not going to read it right now, but it's the description of the autumn season. In, 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 um, and if you uh, are interested in reading it, a very beautiful section, description of autumn in, uh, in Krishna book. It's very, quite lovely. So here we are. This is after Krishna just did this, uh, one of these incredible feats that he did. He uh, protected the devotees. I'm not going to get into that right now, a whole adventure. Krishna is surrounded by his relatives, friends, cows, calves, and bulls, and glorified by his friends singing, again entered Vrindavan, which is always full of cows. While Krishna and Balaram were enjoying life in Vrindavan, in the midst of the cowherd boys and girls, the season gradually changed to summer. The summer season in India is not very much welcomed because of the excessive heat but in Vrindavan, everyone was pleased because the summer there appeared just like spring. This was possible only because Lord Krishna and Balaram, who are the controllers of even Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva, were residing there. In Vrindavan, there are many falls which produce always, which are always pouring water. And the sound is so sweet that it covers the sound of the crickets. And because water flows all over the forest, always looks very green and beautiful. The inhabitants of Vrindavan were never disturbed by the scorching heat of the sun or the high summer temperatures. The lakes of Vrindavan are surrounded by green grasses and various kinds of lotus flowers bloom there, such as the Kalara, Kanja, Utpala, and the air blowing in Vrindavan carries the aromatic pollen of those lotus flowers. When the particles of water from the waves of the Yamuna here, I'm going to, while I do this, I'm going to put my little forest. This is my little insta forest here. These are flowers. This is suburban Maryland. This is not Vrindavan. This is just suburban Maryland. Look, look what Krishna has given us in suburban Maryland. These are from trees in my own yard. This is uh, kind of, what do they call this thing? A red, a red bush tree or something like that? Red bud tree. And this is some twigs from, uh, from a dogwood tree. And this is a, a Japanese maple. So you guys can look at these and imagine yourself in Vrindavan. Uh, Kanjara, uh, Kala, Kalara, Kanja, and Utpala. And the air blowing in Vrindavan carries the aromatic pollen of those lotus flowers. When the particles of water from the waves of the Yamuna, the lakes and the waterfalls, touched the body of the inhabitants of Vrindavan, they automatically felt a cooling effect. Therefore, they were practically undisturbed by the summer season. Vrindavan is such a nice place. Flowers are always blooming, and there are even various kinds of decorated deer. Birds are chirping, peacocks are crowing and dancing, and the bees are humming. The cuckoos there sing nicely in five kinds of tunes. Krishna, 
the reservoir of pleasure, blowing his flute, accompanied by his elder brother Balaram, and the other cowherd boys and cows entered the beautiful forest of Vrindavan to enjoy the atmosphere. They walked into the midst of newly grown leaves of trees whose flowers resembled peacock feathers. Mm. They were garlanded by those flowers and decorated with saffron chalk. Sometimes they were dancing and singing and sometimes wrestling with one another. While Krishna danced, some of the cowherd boys sang and others played on flutes. Some bugled on buffalo horns or clapped their hands, praising Krishna. My dear brother, they said, you are dancing very nicely. Actually, all these boys were demigods descended from higher planets to assist Krishna in his pastimes. The demigods garbed in the dress of cowherd boys were encouraging Krishna in his dancing, just as one artist encourages another with praise. Up to that time, neither Krishna nor Balaram had undergone the hair cutting ceremony. Therefore, their hair was clustered like crow feathers. They were always playing hide and seek with their boyfriends or jumping or fighting with them. Sometimes while his friends were chanting and dancing, Krishna would praise them. My dear friends, you were dancing and singing so nicely. The boys played at catching ball with fruits such as bale and amalaka. They played blind man's bluff, challenging and touching one another. Sometimes they imitated the forest deer and various kinds of birds. They joked with one another by imitating croaking frogs and they enjoyed swinging under the trees. Sometimes they would play amongst themselves like a king and his subjects. In this way, Balaram and Krishna, along with their friends, played all kinds of sports and enjoyed the soothing atmosphere of Vrindavan, full of rivers, lakes, rivulets, fine trees, and excellent gardens filled with fruits and flowers. Is that nectar or what? <laughs> you know, when you read Krishna book, this is the thing, you know, materially, Srila Prabhupada is like an old Indian guy who came from like another, some, you know, from Bengal or something like that. But spiritually, when you read Prabhupada's, this is, this is just his paraphrasing. This is not his writing. You understand? This is just literally his paraphrasing of an expression of what he read, then he'll write. This is what his paraphrasing of, of Sukadev Goswami's, this is just right from the book. But you can see, just like a great musician, you can see that he's glimpsing it. He's seeing it. He's experiencing it. You taste it. Like when you hear a great musician playing, it's different than when another person plays the same song. The song's great, but in the hands of a master musician, it's alive. Prabhupada's works are alive. Uh, here's another little section um, we can read if we have we have a little more time or should I stop there, Shasti Barkabu? Yeah, but we have a little bit more time. Uh, it's a, it's totally up to you. Uh, this is a, this is a little section uh, from the uh, the gopis attracted by the flute. Just a little bit. When the arrival of the beautiful uh, autumn season, uh, of the beautiful autumn season, with the arrival, the waters in the lakes and rivers became as clear as crystal and, f and filled with fragrant lotus flowers and breezes blew very pleasantly. At that time, Krishna entered the forest of Vrindavan with the cows and cowherd boys. Krishna was very much pleased with the atmosphere of the forest where flowers bloomed and bees and drones hummed very jubilantly. While the bees, while the birds, trees and plants were all looking very happy, Krishna, tending the cows and accompanied by Sri Balaram, the cowherd boys, began to vibrate his transcendental flute. Upon hearing the vibration of the flute of Krishna, the gopis in Vrindavan, remembered him and began to talk amongst themselves about how nicely Krishna was playing his flute. They also remembered their pastimes with him. Thus their minds became disturbed. <laughs> this is the right kind of disturbance. And they were unable to describe completely the beautiful vibrations. While discussing the transcendental vibration, they remembered also how Krishna dressed 
decorated with a peacock feather on his head, just like a dancing actor, and with blue flowers pushed over his ear. His garment glowed yellow gold, and he was garlanded with a Vijayanti necklace. Dressed in such an attractive way, Krishna filled up the holes of his flute with the nectar emanating from his lips. So they remembered him entering the forest of Vrindavan, which is always glorified by the footprints of Krishna and his companions. Jai Ho. So Gora? Yes, Mata. Hari Ball. So I just want to tell you, Prabhupada's writing is so sweet, and Prabhupada relished his own writing also, but he always felt, and he always said, that he was just the medium and Krishna's writing the books. You know, it's funny that you mentioned that because I was going to say exactly that earlier and I just <laughs> left it off. Srila Prabhupada once, he used to ask his disciples to read his books to him. And once someone asked him, you know, don't you get, you know, tired of reading your own writing? And Prabhupada said, I, I have not written these books. Krishna has written these books. And he really relished the prayers of Queen Kunti. Uh -huh. he, used to, he loved those and he used to ask his disciples, especially when he was sick, to always read the prayers of Queen Kunti. Uh -huh. Thank you for that nectar. So, Gorbani Prabhu, one thing I wanted to mention, can you hear me? Is that Srila Prabhupada was sitting there in Vrindavan, totally immersed in the rasa of devotional service. He didn't have to leave Vrindavan. He he was he had perfection. He had everything in Vrindavan. But yet he left Vrindavan at such an advanced age. He was in Sri Vrindavan Dham. And he came all the way to New York City, Boston, the most wretched, terrible. He went from the Vrindavan forest to the forest of material enjoyment to bring us back to Vrindavan. So we're, we're, we're trying to leave the forest of material enjoyment to go to the forest of Vrindavan. And Srila Prabhupada left the forest of Vrindavan to come to the forest of enjoyment. To bring us back to the forest of Vrindavan. Just meditate on how merciful is the spiritual master and how merciful are the devotees that they were engaged in so many ways to bring us back to, to Vrindavan, where we can exchange these wonderful rasas. We can look at that slide that I put together. We can look at the slide and we can see that Krishna is, is sharing himself in these wonderful rasas with the living entities. He's, he's, he's manifesting as a as a child so he can exchange uh, loving relationships in the, in the mood of uh, Batsaya Bahab with his parents. He's engaged in the Shantaras, right? Where he's allowing the devotees to manifest as deers, as trees, and to exchange and serve Krishna in that way. And then he's, he's exchanging also in the form of friendship, Bob, in the Sakarasa. And he's, he's playing with his cowherd boys. And, and then he's engaged in the most highest Madhulya Rasa and performing these wonderful leelas with all of the gopis and all of the wonderful uh, associates headed by Srimati Radharani. But one thing that is so wonderful about Vrindavan is that everyone is totally dependent on the lotus feet of Lord Krishna. And that picture there is one of my favorite pictures where Krishna is just, the forest is on fire. Hmm? <laughs> there, and Krishna is just sucking up all of the fire to protect his devotees. So, that is the mood in Vrindavan, is that everyone is totally dependent on Krishna. Um, you know, we're not thinking that according to my beauty, my wisdom, my, my cleverness, that I'm able to um, exist and, 
and, and make progress in this material world. The residents of Vrindavan are always taking full shelter of Krishna, and Krishna is always there to exchange these wonderful pastimes and to protect the devotees from all the dangers that might come. So thank you very much, Gaurani Prabhu. So that's the contrast between the mood in the material world and the, and the mood in, in devotion and service. And we cannot thank Srila Prabhupada enough for bringing this mood to share with the living entities in his temples all over the world. It's just incredible to go to a temple and see that Krishna is there in the form of uh, the deities and the devotees are so enthusiastically serving the deities. Um, I was listening to my god sister, Rasagya, who has left us, but she was such a wonderful devotee. And she was remembering Srila Prabhupada in, in the days, in the 70s. And one thing she was saying was that Prabhupada was able to, to inspire the devotees to engage in devotional service with such love and enthusiasm. And she was talking about in those days that the, the Madhajis, they would, they would be in competition on, on how many sweets they could make for the deity. Right, that they would make all kinds of cakes and cookies and and bring all kinds of, of, of wonderful garlands and so they were so enthusiastic to serve uh, the beautiful Lordship Sri Sri Radha Govinda um, by the purity and by the devotion that Srila Prabhupada was able to inspire us um, so that we were so much enthused to, to serve Krishna. So Srila Prabhupada is still here and we're here to, to continue to encourage the devotees to travel back to the lotus feet of Sri Sri Radha and Krishna. That's what this Kayana Kopachuru is ultimately bring us back to, to that mood of pure devotional service onto Sri Sri Radha and Krishna. So now in the songbook, we're at the point where we're going to begin the Upadesha section of instructions to the mind. And before we get to that section, Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur is glorifying the Shiksha Gurus and the Diksha Gurus to get their blessings to continue the narration. So, Gaurani Prabhu and, and Srivani Mataji will sing this, this final introduction song. And then we'll open it up for any kind of questions. Hare Krishna. So we have the great pleasure to hear the singing of one of my favorite devotees, Sri Rani, from here in D.C. We've recorded together many times, but not enough, not enough times. She and her husband are very dear, and their daughter, very dear friends of my mine and my family's. And uh, this is a very short song, so we're just going to dwell a little bit on this song. We'll go back and forth. Maybe we'll sing a couple of times each line. Um, Vishnu, are you going to read the translations for this uh, as we go? As you please. So we'll we'll sing the first one a few times, a couple of times, and then you can read the translation. Then we'll sing the second like that. We'll do each back and forth, okay? Sure. Diksha Guru Kripa Kori Mantra Upadesh Koriya Dekhan Krishna Tatvir Nide Dikha Guru Kripa Kori Mantra Upadesh Koriya Dekhan Krishna Tatvir Nide 
the initiating spiritual master shows his causeless mercy by giving his disciples instructions in chanting the Har Harinam Mahamantra. By, doing, by so doing, he points the disciples towards the direction of the truths pertaining to the Supreme Lord Sri Krishna. Diksha Guru Kripa Kodi Mantra Upadesh Koriya Dekhan Krishna Tatvar Nirdesh Dikha Guru Kripa Kori Mantra Upadesh Koriya Dekhan Krishna Tatvar Nirdesh O Diksha Guru Kripa Kori Mantra Upadesh Kori Adekhan Krishna Tatvar Nidesh Guru Kripa Kori Mantra Upadesh Kori Adekhan Krishna Tatvar Nidesh Shiksha Guru Kripa, Shiksha Guru Brinda, Kripa Koriya Pa, Sadha Ke Sikhan Sadhane Ramdasa. Shiksha Guru Brinda Kripa Koriya Pa, Sadha Ke Sikhan Sadhane Ramdasa. But I consider the numerous instructing spiritual masters to be more important, for they show unlimitedly more mercy by training the neophyte devotees in all the essential aspects of practical, regulative devotional service, sadhana bhakti. Shiksha Guru Kripa Shiksha Guru Binda Kripa Koriya Pa Sadha Ke Sikhan Sadha Nirinda Sa Shiksha Guru Binda Kripa Koriya Pa Sadha Ke Sikhan Sadha Nirinda Sa Last words. Shiksha Guru Gana Pade Koriya Pranati Upade Shamala Boli Jamanapati Shiksha Guru Gana Pade Koriya Pranati Upade Shamala Boli Nijamanapati Therefore, offering my prostrated obeisances unto the lotus feet of all instructing spiritual masters, I will now narrate this garland of different types of spiritual advice, which will all be directed towards my own mind. Wonderful, wonderful. So we've completed the introduction of Sri Sri Kalyana Kopaturu. And as Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur has said, next week we will begin the, the various Upadeshas that Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur is giving to his mind and to our minds that will help us purify our hearts and prepare us for devotional service. Um, Muttama Prabhu did a wonderful job of explaining our condition in the material world. But if you stick with this program and you listen to the various instructions of Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur, it will totally cleanse us of all types of misconceptions. Physical misconceptions are just the beginning of what we have to overcome. But many of the, many of the misconceptions and anarthas and obstacles that we have that keep us in this material world are mental 
there are mental contaminations. So we have to really pray to purify our minds of these mental contaminations. And next week we'll start singing those songs. It was a very wonderful song that we'll sing starting up next week, next week that's uh, describing this praying to the mind and describing to the mind that we should not be attached to this material body. So it's a wonderful song we have prepared for you. We want everyone to join us. It's going to be a very beautiful week next week. So, so that few, being said, if anyone few, has any questions. Few, a few announcements before we do questions because we might lose some, some people at some point. Uh, this meeting can go on for some time. Uh, I'm happy to stay a little bit longer as people ask questions. A couple of quick, quick announcements. Um, we don't have an email list for this program. Uh, this, the, the, uh, my uh, reaching out to all of you via WhatsApp uh, has been the only way that I've shared this uh, and then other friends have shared too. If you are interested Vishnu is going to put her email again. We do this every week. She's going to put her email into the chat group. And uh, if anyone wants to start a list uh, or, or something like that, you're welcome to do that. And a good way to stay in touch with us uh, for suggestions or questions. Or, like I see Jatari Prabhu is here. Jatari Prabhu's daughter is a wonderful singer and her husband is also a wonderful singer. If somebody wants to join, as you'll, you'll see this next week, we have a... a, a a song coming and little by little new guest artists are going to be coming and singing with us. And when I say guest artists, I just mean like guys from our community, like, you know, people like devotees. So they're, they're, we're coming on like to share different devotees from their homes. So I'd like to have these guest Bhakti artists. Uh, and I'd like to reach out to all of you in this community. If someone wants to do a song, you reach out to Vishnu. She'll put you in touch with Shasti Bar Prabhu directly to discuss what song might be possible like this we're going to go through this 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 book uh carefully so this is an opportunity for us to not just uh 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 you know hear but also listen to each other and speak to each other and like that so um uh any other announcements that i should be making oh uh please uh you know this is recorded i'm going to be putting the link on youtube on my youtube channel gorvani official youtube channel so you can find last week's session there and uh, special thanks to our friends, uh, Ratnesh and others, you know who you are, uh, for allowing us to, to make this call possible. So thank you so much. Uh, now, please, uh, uh, any questions for Shasti or Prabhu or anyone else? Thank you. Or any comments? Rasa Prada, here is to be. Rasa Prada, did your question get answered earlier? Gora? Is this Bonnie? Is that yes, Bonnie? it is. Hello, how are you? Thank you so much for joining us. Of course, I want to thank you very much for inviting me because it's a new experience for me and it's been a very long time since I've seen you. Yes, and it has, many years. Yes, yes. And I, I really appreciate uh, tuning in and enjoying this beautiful service. So thank you so much. It's our great pleasure. Uh, I can't express enough how grateful I am that you're here. Uh, everybody just know this. Uh, that voice is from a very special person who has a very, intimate role in my life for many years and I we don't have to get into it but thank you so much for joining us I'm very grateful oh and I'm hoping perhaps that next time um we can um I believe you do have my contact info it would be great to be able to see your your schedule via email as well rather than uh whatsapp if that's humanly possible Yes, you mentioned that. So uh, Vishnu will start a list. So if you if you can open your chat, uh, Bonnie, and just put your email yeah. into there for her, write to her directly. That'll be the beginning of the list. Thank you for that. Right, and I can share with others. Thank you, Gora. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Bye bye. Uh, well. Hey, Gora, I have a question for you. Can you hear me? Yes, Prabhu, I'm your servant. 
<laughs> Thank you. Um, so everything that Prabhupada um, writes on his books, some way, somehow, it comes from Bhakti Venoda, all the, the, the essence of the Bhagavad Gita as well. Well, Shastivar Prabhu can speak on that. You want to speak on the connection between Srila Prabhupada and Bhakti Vinod Thakur, uh, Shastivar Prabhu? Wonderful question, Prabhuji. So, so we come in a line of, of spiritual masters who are passing down the ripened fruit of the Vedic trees uh, very gently from one spiritual master to another. So, Srila Prabhupada, um, he is giving what he has received from Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, who was his spiritual master. And Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur was the son of Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur. And he was a, almost a constant companion with Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur. So, he learned that that was his father, so he learned firsthand all of these wonderful instructions, Sambandha Abhideya Payojana, the three parts of our, our tattva, directly from Srila Bhaktivedanta Thakur. So naturally, Srila Prabhupada inherited that transcendental knowledge from his spiritual master as well as from directly from studying Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur's teachings. I'll give you a quick story and then we'll end there because we're a little bit over. So I lived with Bhak Bhagavad Das in um, Orisha and he always told me this one story of one time he was in Kattak and he was um, on a way to make a life member and one elderly gentleman saw him, a uh, westerner with a dhoti and kurta, and he was amazed and he grabbed him and said, who are you and why are you dressed with dhoti and kurta? And finally he was dragging on Bhagavad's dhoti right in the middle of the road and Bhagavad was, who are you and why are you, you know, I, I have some place to go. I'm a disciple of his divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. And of course, this person, Dodavinda Shastri was his name. He didn't know who that person was, but then Bhagavad took out a, a Bhagavad Gita, not a Bhagavad Gita, it was a, it was a Rack the Godhead magazine, and he showed it to this Shastri, and it had one article that said, was talking about yoga in it, and it had a particular quote in it, about yoga, and when this person saw that quote, he said, this is Bhakti Vinod Thakur. This is Bhakti Vinod Thakur, <laughs> right? <laughs> so he was a disciple, this elderly person, Govinda Shastri, he was a disciple of Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, but he had a back to God, he was looking at a back to Godhead of Srila Prabhupada, an article that Prabhupada had wrote but when he saw the article, he immediately thought about Bhakti Vinod Thakur. He said, this is Bhakti Vinod Thakur, right? Mm -hmm. So here is a perfect example of, of, of how in the teachings of Srila Prabhupada, you will find the teachings of all the Acharyas, in, including Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur. Going back to Naratam Das Thakur, Prabhupada loved to sing the songs of Bhakti Vinod Thakur. He loved to sing the songs of Naratam Das Thakur. He loved to quote from Rupa Goswami, Sanatana Goswami. So as Ranutama said early, is that the devotees in our Sampadayas, we, we repeat what's given to us by our spiritual master. We try not to make up anything. There's so much nectar out there. Prabhupada didn't write a lot of songs himself. He wrote a few songs. But he mostly sung Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur songs, isn't it? Yeah. So he was very much in tune with the teachings and the bhajan and the mood of Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur. So 
to answer your question, yes, you know, you know, our spiritual master, and we are also passing down by having this session, we are passing down these wonderful teachings of Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur. But at the same time, we're also sharing our pastimes with Srila Prabhupada and reading from Prabhupada's books. In this way, it is a chain of the disciplic succession by which we are passing down these wonderful fruits of devotional service. Srila Prabhupada ki jai. Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur ki jai. I appreciate that. Vaishnava Sangha ki jai. Uh, thank you so much, Shasivar Prabhu. Thank you to Rashmi also. And uh, thank you to Shivani again. Thank you all for joining us. <clears throat> thank you to Vishnu. Uh, who did I miss? We have uh, so many wonderful friends here. Um, thank you, Ashrai. It looks like Ashrai is here. And we've got uh, so many wonderful people. I'm not sure I know everybody. Oh, my mom's there, but she didn't chime in when she was uh, asked to speak. We have Sri Keshava and Sophia. Hey, Sophia, how are you? Uh, let's see who else. Sharadia and Arjuna and Puja Devi and Gurdas and uh, Krishna Kumari. Thank you all so much. <clears throat> we'll see you. Uh, oh, well, let's let's all give blessings. Ratnesh, our friend and host, our, uh, he just had a daughter at 5 p.m. So everyone, please uh, raise your hands to the screen and bless yeah. Ratnesh and his family. Haribo! 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 Hey, Haribo! Radhe Radhe! Radhe Radhe. Sweet. Okay, everyone. Haribo! Haribo! Haribo!